Welcome back to Filter, I'm Diane Mizota, counting down gaming's biggest bad boys. The rankings for Filter shows come directly from the responses you post on the G4 website. To make your vote count, log on to g4tv.com slash filter and select the filterator. Then choose a category, vote on a scale of 1 to 10, and we'll take care of the rest. While you're there, be sure to post your suggestions for topics and games you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Getting back to the countdown, we check in with an atypical bad boy by the name of Knuckles. Knuckles is an echidna, which for all of you who don't have a PhD in zoology, is a hedgehog indigenous to Australia and one of the first mascots to ever garner a bad boy reputation. The hard-edged, feisty little jerk locks down the seventh spot. Knuckles is a red character. He's got a, he's a bad boy because he uh, just doesn't give a damn. In the platform world of cute characters, he's like, I don't care. I don't believe you, Sonic. You're all wrong. I'm going my own way. Knuckles is just sort of like is the next door neighbor bad guy. He fits the profile of, you know, somebody that's doing something good, but defying, you know, the, the good character, the hero in the game. He's just trying to make Sonic's life a whole lot harder, but at the same time, you're also helping Sonic out. Knuckles, he was, uh, he's just kind of like a bully. With claws of steel, Knuckles is capable of bringing the pain. And with a pair of Beretta 9mm and a heart full of hate, so is our next guy. When Max Payne comes home to find his wife and baby murdered, then finds out he's been framed for a third killing, revenge is a dish that's best served one bullet at a time, in bullet time. And although the slow-mo feature may make Max more of a bad ass than a bad boy, he has plenty of other features that make him a shoe-in for the six spot. Let's start with the leather jacket. <laughs> of you guys touch Max when it comes to bad boy behavior? We asked a few people what they'd gotten away with, and here's what they had to say. <laughs> bad boy behavior that I've gotten away with, I would say fighting at school. Uh, I'd say kicking guys' asses and getting paid for it. Bad boy behavior, uh, nothing I could talk about on TV, but um, I, was, I was a little pyromaniac when I was little. Outrunning a cop. I've done it a couple times. We were going pretty fast on Sunset back to uh, Los to Santa Monica, and we, um, we the police was behind us, two cars, and we knew he was coming after us. He had his lights on, so I pulled right really quickly, pulled right again, pulled right again, and basically outran this cop and got back on the freeway and ditched him. A bad boy behavior that I've gotten away with is uh, skipping class and. Uh, just kind of doing my thing with my band or something, just go playing a gig instead of going to class and still getting the notes and acing the tests. I was a graffiti writer and a tagger in LA for a while. It harkens back to the same kind of philosophy behind bad boys. It's like, you know, I, I was a bad guy, but I had a core of goodness to me. I wasn't doing it to be malicious. I did it because I wanted to be cool or whatever it might be. I personally haven't gotten away with much bad boy behavior. I haven't killed a lot of people yet. Um, I do get a lot of girls, I'll admit that. That's, I'm happy with that, but um, I haven't killed anybody yet. And I think once I get to that point when I'm ready to start killing people, I'll finally achieve that bad boy status. But that's down the road. I always knew you guys had a wild streak. Now it's time to meet someone else with one. Coming in at number five is Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. The angst-ridden military operative may be overly nihilistic, but when his friends need him, he'll ditch the attitude and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anyone. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you have a gun blade, a lethal sword that slices people open and then launches a spray of bullets into him. <laughs> In the line 
line of work that he's in, I'm sure the guy at number four wouldn't mind having a gun blade of his own. It doesn't matter though, because Tommy Versetti could take care of business with a spoon if he had to. The Vice City mobster has lost a boatload of Colombian white, and since his employers aren't exactly what you'd call the forgiving type, Versetti's got to go about finding it any which way he can. Say hello to a guy who knows how to get some serious mileage out of a chainsaw. Tommy, he's uh, sort of just a bad guy all around. Tommy Versetti is the quintessential bad boy. I don't think he does have a, a whole lot of core goodness to him. I can't really think of much in the story of that game that he's actually trying to achieve this noble. Tommy is the definition of a bad boy. He's got Ray Liotta as the voice of Tommy, so obviously, anytime your voice is Ray Liotta, you're a bad boy just by persona. He's probably number four just because he's uh, he is, uh, to the very core, a bad boy. Uh, he really doesn't have a whole lot of goodness going on in him. If there is a bad boy in video games, it's Tommy Versetti. With his renegade approach, Versetti was a sure fit for the countdown. But coming up after the break, we'll take a look at a few guys that barely missed the cut. Plus, we'll keep counting them down till we make our way to number one. Can a hellbound PI take the trophy, or will a sneaky bastard steal it out from under him? Find out when Filter returns. 